OMG, what a glorious day today it is, and what a great day for a picnic. In fact, I'm going for a picnic with the kiddo. That's why I've got my small Hadley Pro on. Big shout out to sponsor this video, Adorama, supporting creators with gear knowledge and inspiration to do what they love. Yeah, I know what you're thinking, not another Billingham, not another camera bag. Yes, got a bit of a camera bag fetish and a bit of a Billingham camera bag fetish, but they're really useful and let me show you why. Yeah, so I think I have a bit of a camera bag buying fetish. The bags are literally falling over me right now. Okay, anyhow, it's been some time since I last did a what's in my camera bag video. In fact, last time is my vlogging gear video, but things have changed. It's all about carrying the essentials now, nothing more, less, is best, which is why I've got this after looking at Locke's video about the Hadley Small Pro. But what's so good about it? It's got pockets, it's expandable pockets too. Pop them open, expanded. Customizable inner, as you'd expect. You can take out the inner bit just like any other Hadley bag. Weatherproof zipping on the back, revealing a document pocket or used tissues. Detachable strap. Just like that. It's so cute. And this is the big feature with Billingham bags. It's the quick release straps that don't make that Velcro sound. Nobody wants a Velcro sound when you're opening a Karen bag. Imagine that, you're, you're out in the wild taking pictures of these birds. You don't want to make a noise and then... Or street photography. You want to capture the decisive moment and then... Everybody's gone. Fleed. People were distracted by what seems like a cappuccino machine sound. And everything about it just screams quality. All that stitching, the rivets, and all these leather bits here to protect the edges. Mwah. Fantastic. And it's made in England. Nothing's made in England anymore. If you watch Locke's video, he does a little waterproof test on it. He, he doesn't piss on it. Yep, so that's pretty much why I like Billingham bags and why I think Hadley Small Pro is the bag that I've really been missing in my rather extensive collection of camera bags. But what do I carry in one of these bags? Go. Anyway, let's cut away from that filthy gear porn and provide you with something useful. Here's five accessories that I think are useful to have in your camera bag, starting with number one. For photos or video, it's incredibly useful for creativity. I mean, you can do some things in Photoshop in post-processing, but on a sunny day like this, if you want to get nice motion blur, it's much easier and more organic to do it straight out of camera. Not really just for stills, but also for video. If you want to have that magical 180 degree shutter, which is not actually magic. Thank you very much, me, for that top tip on filters, but what do I mount those filters on? Well, here are my lens choices. Number one is this. For vlogging, always have an ultra wide angle zoom. Incredibly useful. Whoop. Ah yes, autofocus is working good. You know what, because I've switched back to Sony. There you see, that's at seven millimeters, equivalent 14 millimeters in full frame format. Oh, wow, look how big my arm looks. Yes, so need one of those. That's definitely in the bag. The, ironically, when I'm talking about filters, this doesn't have a filter mount. See? No one to mount it. Ultra wide angle zooms, love them. I've got the Canon 1635 as well, F4. Of course, it's got image stabilization. It's got a nice red ring. I don't know why I've got this accent all of a sudden. But as I said, I will be transitioning back to Sony, I think. This is pretty crappy. Look, I've, I've dropped it. In fact, I noticed it's not focusing properly at the minute. The first bit of this video is probably out of focus because it's not focusing properly. But I've only just realized after shooting that bit. It's a 10 to 18 millimeter. Look, look at the state of that. I, I keep saying it and it's true. I'm not a clumsy person, but I've dropped it and therefore disproving myself. Optically, it's not 
a fantastic lens. For vlogging, it's fine. I don't really need superb optics, but ideally I'll replace this with a full frame 1635, which I owned before, but sold, but I'll probably have to buy it again. It's got 10 to 18 millimeter range, and when you put it on the A7, I'm starting to forget the names of these Sony cameras because they like replace them every minute. So anyway, when you mount this to the full frame A7 III, it automatically changes to Super 35 format because this is a crop lens. What else? A standard lens, everybody's favorite standard, what? A? A standard lens, everybody's favorite fixed focal length, focal length. 50 millimeter equivalent. This is a 25 millimeter F1.4, Summy Lux. Not a real Leica, but it says Leica on the front. Tasty, tasty goodness. Don't eat it, it's not really tasty. What is that usually for? Usually for close-up product shots, close-ups of me holding the camera, and that's pretty much it for, for B-rolls because it's got the nice shallow depth of field with f1.4. Point is, for lenses, I pretty much pack just that ultra wide angle zoom, standard lens. That's it. If I would pick one more lens, I'd probably pick something a bit more telly. But that's, that's really all I need in terms of lenses. But to be honest, for photography, it doesn't really change much in terms of lens choices. I'd have one ultra wide angle zoom. It covers 16 35 with a 5D Mark IV and then a standard, a prime lens, 50 millimeter f1.4 or 35, or just go for 40 millimeter f2.8. Perfect, done. Ugh. The thing that I really hate the most in life, well, maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration. All right, so the things that I don't quite like so much is having these tiny little objects like SD cards in the bottom of your bag and trying to get the damn thing out. Perhaps the Peli case for memory cards is a bit overkill, but I like how it keeps it organized. At least you won't be finding cards in the bottom of your bag, of course. In terms of camera choices, I'd love to say that I use this all of the time, but I don't. It's a C300 Mark II from Canon. Not mine, it's a loner, so uh, I have to be careful with it. But because of its size and weight, when I'm shooting stuff by myself, it's not actually practical to shoot with this and have geared up and reviewing as well in my bag. And I used this to shoot the street photography video recently. I would love to say that I use that most of the time, but that would be a lie because most of the time I use the GH5. Well, up until recently, I've been using the GH5 because it's pretty damn good, apart from the autofocus, which sucks major ass. Look, it just can't be the Sony in terms of focus. It's got 4K 50, 60p, it's got the form factor, it's got image stabilization built in, it's almost got the full package, but it's just missing out. One short of a full package, which is why I've gone for the A7 III, which isn't the full package, it doesn't have the tilty flippy screen, but it's great because the focus is fantastic, look at that. Boom. <sighs> is it really that difficult? But yes, as I mentioned before, for serious stills, I'd use something like Canon 5D Mark IV, though if I'm really serious, I'd probably use something a bit better than that. No, but otherwise I'll use something like a compact camera, like an X100T, well, I still haven't bought it yet. I'd like to have an X100T. For street photography, for travel photography, that is really my ideal, to have a compact camera with a fixed focal length. Mainly, I don't like carrying tripods, but if I do, this is my fave, because it's light. Otherwise, something like this iFootage monopod with detachable feet for vlogging. Yes, you'll need a camera, you'll need a lens, preferably a compatible one, I mean, pff, top tips or what? Unless you like lens whacking, of course. Oh, look at you, you lens whacker. Oh, you freaking lens whacker. Oh, wank, whack off. Oh, off on a tangent bit, back to what I was talking about. I know this is a bit of an obvious one. It's kind of like saying, oh, top tips. I think you should brush your teeth every morning because otherwise your breath stinks or your teeth might rot away. Clean glass for finger smudge because there's no point in having sharp lenses if you're going to cover it in your own grease and clean dust off sensors with one of these blowy things. And oh yes, remember to brush your teeth. Something else that I want to mention, okay, uh, with the Sony A7, I've got a cage and I've got the Peak Design strap. You know, I don't actually like the fact that it's like a seatbelt. It looks like I've just been in a car crash and I've still got the seatbelt around me. You know what I mean? Ah, uh, I had an accident. These bits, you can detach them really quickly and easily. Because usually I'll be carrying one, usually the camera that I'm filming with, around my shoulder. And if I suddenly want to film something, I'll take this off, 
put it somewhere in a pocket or something and then just have it strapless because I don't want the strap getting in the way. Number four, tools. And I don't mean bring a toolkit like a hammer and a drill and screwdrivers set. Take a Swiss army knife. You need a hex key, something to screw with. Not like that. Don't use your fingernails, you ruffian. Keep it tight, do it right. Oh, and a torch or something is useful to see what you're screwing in the dark. All right, so technically this won't go in my bag. It's, I mean, there's a case. How am I gonna fit that in my bag? This is my DJI Mavic Air. Ooh, and you know what? Usually when it comes to transporting it, I will carry it in this Peli case. It's a very nice Peli case um, slash, I think it's a farm case. No, no, case, farm case for carrying your eggs safely. I think Case Farm make the insert for this. And this is a Peli case, as you can see. Peli 1400, and I just put stickers on it with dogs with a visual device on its eyes. I wouldn't do that. Bit cruel to animals because I'm a bit OCD with this kind of stuff. I love just the organization of that. You've got to love these Peli cases. They're just, they're tough. Iron Man uses one of them. I mean, they're practically bulletproof. Don't worry, maybe wrong choice of words. They're just really, really tough. Like, yeah. Weatherproof cameras and lenses can be fine in the rain to an extent, but I've had weatherproof lenses, weatherproof lenses in the rain, and somehow rain got trapped in between the elements inside. But it's not just your gear you should be rainproofing, it's probably good to rainproof this as well. I probably wouldn't carry this with me all the time, but when I'm going away to do shoots, I'll probably take one of these. Definitely. <laughs> I'm showing over there. I'm pretending I've got a live audience here. Oh, look at this. I'll probably take one of these Nintendo Switch just to keep entertained. Um, Keyring holder, also a Billingham one. Sony wireless lab mic system. External recorder just in case things go a bit pear shaped. Bongo ties, not for tying your bongos, but you can basically tie anything you want. You can stuff to back up data on. Best shotgun mic for vlogging right now, the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. Wet wipes, tissues, and um, you know what? That's pretty much it. So that's the gear that I use for video and photo shoots. Not necessarily the best, but it's a mix of what is the most useful in my mind for how I shoot, what I think is good enough for the job, or what I can actually afford. Having owned and used a lot of gear, well, owning a lot of gear is fine if you're a collector, but when it comes to actually doing stuff, I prefer to just take the stuff that's really, really useful, less of more. Anyway, one final shout out to Anorama for supporting this channel. Thank you very much, really appreciate it. Links are in the description below. See ya.